Rolling? Everybody rolling? Yeah. yeah. One, two, three, four. Okay, wait, sorry, sorry. Okay, I'll give over. One, two, three, four. Shake those hands, Rajesh. Jump. I just sat properly, no, like give over this thing. One, two, three, four. किसी छोटे शहर की गर्मी में रास्तों पे हम बादल खोजते थे Hi, this is Jaydeep, the director of this film. 
I will appear creepily on and off like this in the voiceover and you will never get to see me. And this is Harshad. I shot and co-edited the film. I'm not the director, so this strange device of us talking like this as a director's and editor's commentary is not my idea. Actually, that's a good way to put it. Except that we're not commenting on a film, but a music band. Jadi, you want to tell me why you're glorifying an unknown band in a DIY film that no one is interested in? Everybody tells stories about successful people and romanticize their struggling days. I thought we'll tell a story about a band's struggling days and romanticize their future. And we are not glorifying anyone, by the way, just telling a different story. So we set out to make a short film, but this is what it became. You're truly the Ashutosh Gowarikar of documentary shots. In case you're wondering, Harshad is not here to just mock me, but to provide perspectives on these band members, as he is not just their current flatmate, but also their batchmate from college. And don't worry, this is the most we will speak in one go in the film. As the editor, I can at least manipulate that. So funny story with this apartment. Uh, I just pressed the eighth floor. It's gonna take me to the seventh floor. And uh, if I press the seventh floor, it's gonna take me to the eighth floor, which is higher than it. I'm not entirely sure, but it just like creates a lot of confusion. So every time we order for food or something, people are fucking lost. And it's just weird. It's just a very weird thing. I it's, it reeks of jhol, but I'm not sure. And we have been staying here for almost a year. We haven't figured it out yet. name city has come from because it really looks like a name for a delhi band uh so you know how in a big city you're like alienated you're surrounded by people you're pressed against on all sides by people like in a train in a bus wherever you go there's no space but everyone's like there's a constant vein of alienation you're calling yourself city hairs your album is called city hairs there's a song called city hairs in the album so what happens if you change the theme of your next album if it's an album of love songs what are you going to call yourself dil dhadak dhadak or something like that Yeah, probably not that cheesy. I don't know. It's sometimes department, you know, like re- retarded love songs. I think we can be better off with it. No, but like in the sense that it won't change because I don't think that the city won't play. Even if it's love song, the city will play a part in it. Like it will it, always play a part, yeah. regardless of what you what music you do. Yeah, of course. Like that's what. So Samik is basically a recluse with no social life. So when he gets a chance to speak these days, he can't stop, which is interesting. because his lyrics are actually really sharp and economical ab main sheher se haar chuka hu purani khabar se haar chuka hu yahan log bekaar chub dekho raja dalna ho to dekhte hain dekhna ho to bolte hain tu kahi chal chal
Nadia is like that, like the proper city is that like, describes all of us very well. Isn't it also like saying something like there's a like the grass is greener on the other side? Like yeah, basically, you're trying to say that yeah. Nadia ke part the grass might be. Like greener. basically, we let's start something new type. Like, this shit is the fuck. Like, <laughs> very nice. Wise words. Uh, very wise words. No, but that escapist thing of breaking out and like just leaving all of it behind and going to going towards the light of the tunnel is always there in that song. The baseline for Nadia is supposed to be like a drone because there's a Tanpura running in the background. What Soham plays is also comparable to like the whole feel of the song is supposed to run on a motor. So even the baseline follows that pattern where I just play. While the guitar over it plays Naria is predominantly like uh, on a drone So uh, the thing is like I was very interested about drone and like different sorts of drone in music Drone is a very important part of many, like even in classical music I come from Calcutta and in Calcutta there's this very strong uh, like classical music thing going on. At least my parents are like, they like it. Uh, so uh, I naturally I had to be like the antithesis of, antithesis of that. So like I ended up, you know, listening to very loud, heavy music. I come from UP properly. My father and mother are from like Amethi, Varanasi and Amethi. And so I grew up in a very we can say politically aware family and then like that that was the whole thing though like there was a sense of li literature was always important in the house both my father and mother used to write and so writing was natural to me for, for for a matter of fact and then singing i used to just sing like i used to hear luckily a lot i picked up the guitar when i was uh, 15 or something like that that's when i started playing i didn't have a guitar then I saw people on TV playing it and it was so cool and I was sure that if I played guitar a lot of women would look at me differently. Unfortunately that didn't happen but I sort of ended up falling in love with the guitar in the, over the next two years. He is the musician and I'm more like the writer singer sort of a thing in the thing band so I'll come up with an idea mostly and he'll justify it. It works like that. He'll have to justify that idea or when he'll come, he'll come up with an idea it will be like very He'll have like, you know, different sort of counts, it'll be, yeah, and like, I'll, I'll try to put in something simple in that.
not a poet, so I write four four lines. Like I do it very impulsively by instinct. But both of us are like you know we appreciate good melodies, so but our ways of achieving that are completely different. Always been a problem with us finding a good basses. We knew Abhigyan plays bass. He he can also play bass. So we were thinking more like, "Chalo, we'll try him. We'll see. We'll give him the song. Let's see. He so he hasn't also played Hindi a lot. When he heard it, he instantly took it. Like he instantly came into the band. Always loved playing rhythm, and that's why earlier I used to be uh, used to be a lot into funk because funk is more rhythm based than it is lead based. So I'm always closer to rhythm than I am to the melodic side of it. And uh, yeah, so the bass is actually my sweet spot in that sense. When me and Malawar actually looking at it, the most important part was we were talking. Ki we need somebody who is like us, who can abuse like us, who can talk like us, who can fight like us, who can be chilled out like how the way we are. The four of us are flatmates, so we needed somebody who could understand that. And he, Abhigyan fits that role perfectly. He comes in like he's he's as annoying as the rest of us. is a classical vocalist so and my grandfather uh, pandit kamal banerjee he was a direct disciple of ustad amir khan so classical music like is very deeply engraved you can say in our uh, family's uh, background so everyone is a musician i have not picked up music like from my parents or someone from my family like that it was just like in kolkata during that time like 2007 2008 2006 2007 actually uh, like a lot of traction came for this music business Like there were bands in every like gully, you can say. Nobody said it, but they would look around if I had showed any inclination towards any particular thing. So even if I hum something, they would listen to it. Like is it in tune? Or if I play something, or does he have a beat sense? <laughs> Gumne hume 
रिश्ते नए मिले जो मिले धूप में मिले छाओ के ठंडे साए हो जाने कब गुम हुआ कहा खोया एक आंसू छुपा के रखा था It is interesting how these two distinct sensibilities drive this band's music. Samyak's small town rootedness and Malar's big city western influences. This amalgam fundamentally gives this band its freshness and its own voice. Originality to me would not be like sort of constrained in some geographic thing like you know you don't need to act like I'm perfectly fine with someone who who is from Calcutta coming up and being very influenced by let's say the music of mongolia i don't know it's fine one of my favorite bands was a british working class punk band uh, the clash and they were so influenced by music from jamaica that you know it and it just turned them around because you know gone with the, like the four chord power punk things they, they just ended up being like something versatile and something which sort of transcended the other punk bands of that thing i am influenced by so many different things that sometimes i get lost uh and i can feel that different influences are coming in and i feel really shitty about it but i think it's a nice thing at the end of the day because like you know otherwise it's very boring Jesus, and to make matters more complicated samyak has recently got into western music but he's making up for lost time too quickly it's like he got a software update but compatibility still not fully assured <laughs> but what a relief he doesn't have an accent even when he sings in english that sure fire authenticity test that 99% of those who sing in english in india fail that's because he's a bhaiya this from a maharashtra <laughs> I literally saw him getting like obsessed like a fan girl level obsession over Wilco in a matter of like a week because before that he had, he like his entire musical palette was completely different and then it took a week and then everything he was coming over was like Wilco and then you know after that like he will get influenced by something like Van Morrison and then you know in a week again it's just completely changed <laughs> Lucky guy, what discoveries lie waiting for him? That's the thing about India that we take for granted: this diversity of musical exposure. In which other country in the world does this scale of indigenous diversity mingle so easily with equally diverse Western influences? Thanks to the role of English in our lives. But what happens when they all pile up?
कुछ पता लेके चला बस मिलने किया सारे खाब को छोड़ के सारी मंजिल के बस पल दो पल So I was there batchmate in SIMC Pune between 2009 and 2012. We all became friends very quickly. They weren't interested in music at all. We were all in this first world college training to be journalists and advertising and PR professionals. And we were in this cocoon leading pretty aimless lives. All set to become upstanding citizens no doubt. It probably didn't suit some of us. So in the first 9 to 10 months in college we didn't do anything musically we knew all of us could play music but yeah nothing happened till i think yeah yeah like it was, i think april 2010 was like we saw this film and it really changed our life and musically before that i had no idea personally that music can be done so seriously and like there there is so much of depth there is so much of concept that goes into working of a band So Jadeep I have to tell you this your film Leaving Home was a big hit at SMC 18 of us went to see the film some of us even saw it twice actually 18 that's why it did its best business in Pune so these guys could have never imagined that this filmmaker whose first film inspired them to start their own band an Indian Ocean covers band would one day make his second music film on their band which is of course not an Indian Ocean covers band anymore yeah it's strange but the credit for that has to go to Indian Ocean They were obviously at the top of their game in this film. Anyone paying attention was inspired, and the film was just a messenger, as I hope this film is to young musicians trying to find their own voice. So, why are you making this film, especially after having already made a music film like Leaving Home? I made Leaving Home to share my love of Indian Ocean music. That was the real reason. It is exactly the same here. I was blown away by the City Hills demos. Their raw, fresh sound. Though, of course, it is absurd to compare these two. City is is a band just starting out with a long way to go whereas Indian Ocean were at their absolute peak then the two also have very 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 different stories obviously we all came together we were like we also want to play music and then so sort of our first band shunya happened because of the documentary on Indian Ocean <laughs> I think they were really just doing this to get attention in college which they got. I don't think they were that serious about music then. Do I do remember them doing one original track, a protest song that I rather liked. I think in junior we were just trying to be something else, which at least I too wasn't. For <laughs> sure, I wasn't like that. Wasn't the music that I wanted to do, and uh, we were really immature and in college. We had no identity as such, and that was somewhere which led to the sort of demise of Shunya as a band. That there was no concept to it, no originality to it. It was, it was an Indian Ocean covers band. Essentially, as a cover band, you can't 
go for a very long time. AJ Styles! Wow! Yeah, Scott is impressive! Second in! He's close to the win! My goodness! The boy's 450, but Styles rolls through again! I mean, this is, given the elegance of your music, this just does not go, man, with your Hawaii. What is going on? How can you like WWE? I mean, what's there not to like about it? It's like a performance art. Like, it's, what's, what's there to Like, I, I get the point that you're trying to say that it's fake and everything like that. But we know it's fake. That's the whole thing. So there are many other performance art of course, is, yeah. kinds of Why this? Well, we what are trying to say? I don't know, we have been watching this for yeah, like, so why yeah, 96, 1996, 97. Well, it's storytelling. It's essentially yeah. storytelling. The entire thing is like completely like a story being told, like, you know, except that it doesn't end. It just goes on, yeah. like, it'll go on and storylines will change and everything will happen. And in a way, it just, it, it's just talking about the basic, you know, sort of... Yeah, like very basic. Get us to basic human emotions. Yeah, yeah like, like anger, yeah, well, like victory, know, defeat. Well, uh, the very simple idea. But it also has the entire sporting element to it. So seriously, yeah. in these times when you have any kind of entertainment accessible to you, this mm. is what you choose to fill your Not really, precious like, you know, free time? This is old yeah. school. Yeah, like we do other things also, but this is one of the things we watch. Yeah. It's like watching a TV show, like yeah. it's no different from watching a TV show, I feel. Like a TV show, you always look forward to the next episode. So that is like one thing we look forward to at the end of the week also. Like oh, Monday post Raw will come, Tuesday post Smackdown yeah. will come. It's that like, is like our soap opera. Something we it's look forward to. It's not our soap opera. <laughs> Avikan, can I ask you what your view is of this uh, strange pastime that these people have? I find it very hard to believe that 25 year olds have to rely on this for entertainment in 2017 when you have narcos, you have stranger things and yet you spend three hours Thank you, 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 this is, by the way, this is the longest running television series, yeah, weekly, oh, so that's your justification, that's so I spent all of I won't say all of them, but especially Mallar and somewhere getting aggressive because of watching double. Because I didn't know them like that when I was in Mumbai. And suddenly I'm, uh, when I was in Bangalore, suddenly I come back to Mumbai and like they watch it throughout the day. And now I've also started watching, but that time they, even the normal, how they talk to each other, it would be very like, you know, aggressive, like how they talk to each other, the wrestlers talk to each other. Really? Yeah, yeah, like just trash talking the other one and they will like, oh, but how can you say that? What do you don't say that? So it's like trash talking at its... No, no, so it seems into their real life. It's not like they're not doing it for fun. No, it no, after fun. a point, I don't think it is. <laughs> but again, that's good. It, it, that's where it starts off. See, the interesting thing is, and I can say this as a witness, WWE actually brought them together even more than music. This was their biggest bonding spot. Even now it is, through all the changes that have occurred to them. Badal Raya Sari was jam track, there was no this thing to it, it was just like, you know... Uh, uh, it still is a jam track. It is. It's a song where every can, everyone can, you know, yeah, just there's a group, just, like, you know, there's a group, like, there's something. One of those rock kind of, like, at least yeah. you do something. There's basically yeah. a lot of reggae and dark yeah. influences in it.
Uh, so lyrics came completely different, like like much later. And and, and that's why you would find that the lyrics are very sparse.
So, Soham was working with you since 2012 at Impact Index and was in Bangalore in 2015. How did that happen? You mean if it had anything to do with leaving home? No, I don't think Soham even knew I had made that film initially. He never told you about Shunya? He told me he was in a college band but never played me any videos. Till that night in Bangalore in September 2015, the Impact Index team hung out after work one night. Some alcohol was imbibed, so... <laughs> yes, you guys look quite happy here. <laughs> and it made Soham uncharacteristically talkative and energetic that night. I had never seen him like that before. Soham is a different animal when he gets drunk. <laughs> well, that night, thank God he was. He showed us old band videos and expressed how sad he felt that he couldn't be part of this newly assembled band again in Mumbai. I just told him he should go to Mumbai every weekend and actually pursue this. As his boss, I knew his salary and that he could afford this. Just about. Sammek and Malar started experimenting with their music and I think Sammek sent me one or two songs. The, I think Daria and Iman, I, the rough mixes. And then I heard them and like, it was not about whether I really wanted to do music or not. I felt I was in the zone. Like this is this is the zone. I if I have to do music again, I'll go back into a, into a different zone, and this has to be the zone. Then one night we I just ended up watching our old videos of Shunya, and then I felt okay, I have to be there. And I knew Tabla was not going to be a part of this new project, like how it was used in Shunya. But I was I was looking forward to picking up a new instrument and looking forward to yeah, do something new again and something fresh. I wanted Soham in the band as a, as a person I wanted him because he brings that balance. He, a lot of times, especially me and Malav have a lot of disagreements regarding how to go about a certain song and there is where we can reach to a point because of Soham so that's why he was important for the functioning of the band. Musically it was important to have somebody who thinks like me when it comes to composition, who has the same sort of mindset who can add a lot to it. I, I knew he was like this mind-blowing tabla player because I've known him since college. But uh, around 3-4 months ago, he started picking up the keyboard. And in that short of a duration, he is playing songs like Iman on the keyboard, which are very heavily blues-based song and you need to know a lot before you can actually touch those songs. But he's just killing it and he's not looking back at any point. साल पहले मुझ में एक ईमान था पर वो ईमान बेकार था एक बड़े शहर में छोटा सा ईमान बिक गया कहीं जिंदगी के ना थे कितने हाथ पर मारे मुझको रोका कितनी बार पर मेरी खाईशों का बार ये सहना सका यूँ ही बिक गया कहीं इस शहर के ना beautiful woman at some point in time, Mumbai everywhere, like, you know, sitting with this broker sort of looking sort of a person who is like, you know, selling them this, you know, I'll like, you know, get you into this film or that, like any cafe or all, wherever you go, wherever you go. So we were talking about this, how, and from there it came, he's like, why don't you write a song about this?
your average age is what 25 or something so like what do you guys know about selling out there all of us do have an idea of what it means So, so this is a hypothetical song. It's no, not something. No, hypothetical song. We have all been in Mumbai. I mean, that's what I said. The first year, you think you are going to do everything. After one year, you're like, okay, let me pay the rent. Let me just take everything into account and let me just pace myself. But when you do that, you actually end up making a few compromises. That three and a half minutes is what you will get. It has to be that fast. In this other time, I don't think anyone thinks. Anyone? So, in the day, no one thinks. 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 कितने हाथ पर मारे मुझको रोका कितनी बार पर मेरी ख्वाहिशों का बार इसे ना सका यू ही बिक गया कहीं इस शहर के ना आई पर्सनली वांट टू जस्ट कट एल्बम विद सिटी हेज I do not understand this entire singles thing at all. It has never appealed to me. I do not have that uh, playlist in my phone with like 18 tracks from 18 different artists because I rather have one album and listen to that album five times because albums are, you know, a point in time in the life of a musical group. Like uh, all the great albums have been like that. like 100% into music but i am very aware that you know it might not like eventually even make it you know and i'm perfectly fine with it because you know it's to me at least it's better to have like you know sort of try to do something and have that thing blow up in your face than not try at all because you know that's just that is something which i can't do my mother keeps telling me ki ab side side, side by side kuch kar lo like do a job and she's like so she also doesn't have that thing like most of the people don't have that thing ki like you they they don't listen to the song my problem is they, it's not like they listen to the song and they so she's never been like really appreciative about ki what you're writing what you're doing so i'm like it's just ki you're not earning so she's also all the time ki 
कुछ कर लो इंटरेस्टिंग इनिशियली इट वॉज इन द केस बट नाउ शी लाइक बीन वन एंड हाफ इयर्स टू इयर्स वॉट आर यू डूइंग विच इज फेयर इन हाफ बट देन आई मीन दैट्स वॉट आई आई डोंट थिंक लाइक मोस्ट ऑफ अपार्ट फ्रॉम दीज गाइज मोस्ट ऑफ द फ्रेंड्स एंड ऑल नो बट इज रियली लाइक बीन अप्रिशिएटिव ऑफ दे बीन अप्रिशिएटिव ऑफ द एफर्ट कि ओ यू डूइंग दिस लिविंग योर जॉब बट नो बट इज रियली टॉक्स अबाउट द सॉन्ग्स commitment as such when i play the keys i can uh, uh, learn lot of new stuff and that even if nothing else i think that might uh, keep me invested for a very long time dragging yourself through the mud is a very important part of the process to come together as a band so i i have no problems with it i, I actually look forward to it because i know that's when people say ki you know the journey matters more than the destination the struggling period is the most important part of the ba- ba- band because once we are big Freudian slip. Romanticize the future. Anyone? Then it will be more mechanical. Right now, every day it's a new challenge, and I love these challenges. I'm not sure if I'm going to be happy with this outfit even like six months from now, one year from now, two years from now. I don't know. But uh, right now we are making music, and uh, the music is sort of satisfactory. I'm not hundred percent fine with it, but it's getting better. The idea behind playing the music is basically not to make money out of it. right like my music is more like from a personal perspective where you just do it when you come back from office since the time i started playing music i've been playing it as a passion not like profession i've not never wanted to take it up professionally it's more like a me thing that you do it i'm very serious about it i'm very serious about doing music and i for me it's not an option anymore by the time i'm like 50 i need to have at least like you know Eight albums out, and those albums might not even be like they might even be heard by like five people. I don't care, but I need to be happy with those albums, and it needs to be out. So that's my that's my end game. I mean, like listening to an entire albums two to three times. I don't think anyone listens yeah. to an album anyway nowadays, and people expect everything to be gift wrapped when it comes to music nowadays. Like uh, it's like, like first time gift wrapped. It has to be spoon fed. Yeah, it's being like, the band that we are, being the music that it is, it's very. It will always be a niche. Right? I think we are joking about it. We'll have to create like one or two, like one of those really super catchy tracks. <laughs> you know that, like you know, just put two, three of those beats in, and then at least people listen to us or something like. It's not going. I don't think it's. happening in the near future just like that Oh 
nobody is ready to take risks also it's not like he, that whole aspect of it is so pissing off ki you oh you leave your job and you're doing this ki who else if i don't like how is it a big deal that i leave my job and i'm doing this ki who else will leave his or her job and do it we are all privileged fucks right ki we we sort of can is somebody from my village who has no financial background or nothing else he is going to come and like you know leave his job and do this shit it is supposed to be done by people like us we are supposed to at this age take risks and do whatever we can do you have all this money to afford this education to live this lifestyle but then you don't want to take risks so like that whole concept is so fucking hypocritical when somebody tells you ki oh you are taking risk no i am not you are not taking risk that is what it is ki it's not a big deal that i'm ta- so with the strumming also like so you, when you change the strumming it flows better towards the end of the lyrics when the lyrics are ending you see that resolve otherwise it, what the the strumming that i was doing there is it doesn't justify it the lyrics that much this yeah. goes better like uh, i think it, it even fits like you, you want to go for it yes yeah. is such a surprise ki oh how are they winning elections and all or what are they doing like ki this whole country is going down to dogs and shit like that ki it's supposed to right when like nobody does shit yeah, you when you're going to sit and fucking talk about it on like you know ki what's on your mind on facebook or you're posted all the time and not do shit i am supposed to make music it's not like you know i'm not doing some big deal why is it so surprising that ki this bigotry is spreading across the country or this is happening or that is happening it will when when you are so complacent a uh, liberals are i feel ki why they are very complacent very india basically is a nation of conservatives who are trying to you know you on know the like brink of yeah like trying to be liberal but they are not they, they absolutely i don't i don't i don't see what they i and i have personal experience i have seen friends who have posted very you know magnanimous and open hearted uh, comments on facebook but in real life day to day life they don't yeah carry like it all- out Mm-hmm. Now neither we won't come to their side saying ki like acha we'll sp- spoon feed your music and they won't take the risk of you know listening and being open to what's around them so who should make that compromise should we go to them should they come to us we should just keep making yeah. our music then nothing like- happens everyone wants validation but not at the cost of what you are trying to achieve that's and no but uh, I'm just asking I'm not saying it this is how it should be but shouldn't we as a band adapt to the society around no, us no. rather than expect the society to so we'll be the same as everyone around then what will change hoga then what will music change hoga then we'll be like rap what will we do it's fuck all ki <laughs> if i had this idea like i was to like when we started I, i was not this like negative about it but now you know like yeah i mean the audience it, sort of kills that excitement yeah. kills the innocence of making the music is a very interesting so thing nahi gana ha is a very interesting thing when you go to the band camp ka stats ka thing Haan. 30 seconds ke baad aise graph niche chala jata hai for every song <laughs> that even on youtube is the same thing like 25% ke baad 
the audience keep keeps decreasing i'm looking at that marketing professionals come up then first it's, 30 second may you should have like two yeah, proper hooks yeah that's the thing comes ki ha for first 10 seconds may you have how do you make music like that ki first 10 seconds may there needs to be a hook 30 seconds may two hooks if it's an indian band and after one and a half minute a new instrument and the- probably we got the response like even hard 10% of what we expect our music would automatically become happier it wouldn't be this depressed yeah man seriously like ha huh, like big cheese this- na somebody i just actually happened somebody told me one of my friends ki we made so send the ep to him he heard all the songs his response was यार सब ठीक है इतने सैड गाने क्यों बनाते हो सारे गाने इतने सैड क्यों है मतलब आई मीन लाइक दैट लाइक फक्स सी आर सॉन्ग्स आर नॉट इवन आर सॉन्ग्स आर नॉट सैड दे ग्लूमी या दे आर लाइक दे देयर इज नो लाइक इज योर बर्थडे यू कांट प्ले आर ईपी इन फ्रंट ऑफ दे sort of that da 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 that thing is not coming out because of what you're playing right but now but da 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 is i'm not even sure if it's like you know something yeah but it, it that at least it's uh, what that's what i'm saying it's like it's sort of closer to now. what we are trying to right instead of the guitar uh-huh. they starts more Uh, not dance but at least it's more clearer at least the vocal so part yeah then concept. like you know we can change of course but i'm saying as of now so then let's do one thing let's just keep the the thing so you don't play during the first part okay, you come cool. in at the yeah cool or would you come in at that part okay would that like because that part is fine like 
Yeah, well, then, like, I'm just saying stay clear of cliches. You know, that's all I want. Uh, because it's it's gonna be very fucking cliche. It's like it's not gonna be. Great. Yeah, let's try it without him then. No, no, as in not that. I'll come in under this thing. See, like if it goes. Okay, yeah, we'll try both. Huh. Okay. Two, three. One round. Uh, one round. One round. Yeah, I'll come in after one round. So since Malar loves to bury vocals under guitars, we thought we'd have Malar speak over the noise of the kettle here. As the editor, I can tell you that was an afterthought. Okay, let me ask you this. Your, how, how has your family taken your choice of music? I think they're like, you know, after hearing the song, they were like, can we be financially independent? I was like, let me see. And they were like, you know, we can support you to the point after that. And they're okay. Fair enough. Yeah, this is around the age <laughs> that you come. So yeah, it's in a way like as long as I can do this in a job sort of situation, I'm pretty fine with it. Because like, I think they have like accepted the fact by now that you know I'm not really gonna do anything else. So like even if I do something it will be related to this only, either like studio work or like you know what I'm doing right now. So it's just like I think in a way they have accepted it. Do you listen to it? No, I never played in my music. I'm right. very I'm very shy about it. I don't play. I don't want that judgment. I don't play my music to anyone actually. Don't you think the way you're doing this is in the piece like cold? Yeah, it will. It will happen. Are you aware that uh, your bandmates think you are the communist guy and they are actually getting a lot of fun out of this? Yeah, this happens. Like, I don't claim to be a, an expert tea porter, but yeah, at least I'm making the tea. Like, people who are like just chilling and not filling the bottles. Again, say It's sort of a 3-3-2, it's sort of a thing, no? So let's, play that game. let's do only that part? One, two, three.
okay, so this is the break. To answer your question, when does the breakthrough come? That's what my answer was based on. Ki, you know, when someone or like without anyone else telling them, when they come and tell you if they like your music so much that they take the effort to coming back to you, it means that your music is organically growing. No, but seriously, how many times has that happened? <laughs> organic. Zero. <laughs> Absolutely zero. So you are waiting for that to happen, basically. Yeah, obviously, and that's when. When you so put to put, put it simply, people who don't know you, to come up to you and say, "Hey, I like your songs." Yeah, that's a very good sign. That's it. Basically, you are seeking validation. Validation, yeah. yeah. I but like, so, I mean, no, no, it's yeah. not just validation. It is validation. Sure. Without, validation. without the validation, it's a more than validation. doing it. Yeah. 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 Like, the think, breakthrough, the vantage point, the tipping point is. Paisa, paisa. I think breakthrough is yeah exactly when you fucking start yeah, making money when like, people pay for your music that time you know they genuinely like the music okay otherwise I, I, know, I, people so. I would want like to build things around CTA like maybe like earn money as a lyricist or like do playback and like I want to be I don't even make sense but be financially secure so that we can not put pressure on City Hayes. <laughs> There is a strange accent on virtuosity in India, where a single element has to stand out rather than the song as a whole. Craft is easier to absorb than art, I guess. So for example, it is easy to criticize Samyak's voice for being weak and miss the big picture of the song. But Lucky Ali transcended that same criticism with the quality of his songs. Hopefully, City Haze can too. Yeah, maybe, but the environment is like that. Other musicians too. The music industry for sure. It's not just with the music industry in this country. It's like in India, culturally speaking, we have this entire, you know, concept of making idols, like this idol worship. Like there's this one guy, there's this cult of personality. I've been to like gigs where uh, people play mad, like, you know, they, they're incredibly cohesive. And uh, I'm not naming bands, but uh, like incredibly cohesive performances. But when people are coming out, they're like, oh, the guitarist. Wow, what a performance. And um, I find it really unfair because uh, you're downright downplaying the band. Gigs right now are the most important thing that we need because just making audio doesn't like, you know, it doesn't, people are, find it hard to relate. So you mentioned Lucky Ali, but would an artist like him or Indian Ocean or Rabbi Shergil have a chance today, artists of that caliber, if they were new artists? Given the musical saturation and attention spans of today, does anything fresh have a chance? But all these three artists had their struggling days too, didn't they? You have even chronicled one of them in Leaving Home. Yes, but is a terrific band like Parvaz getting their due today? What is due to anyone anyway? Shouldn't the pleasure of being able to pursue your calling be reward enough? Yeah, but survival is much tougher than pursuing your calling. It's about like, you know, a king, like, a uh, kid still has a lot of ego, so like, it's still a king, a king stays the king, sort of a thing.
They have the advantage of being in Mumbai, in the thick of it. Their lyrics are simple and direct. They sound contemporary. And gloomy is in fashion too. They'll get interesting work sooner or later. New generation films, web series, whatever. Let's see. Magic will happen if they keep at it. It's more a law of nature than a rumor. चलो and she said ki can you play some of 69 she said ki mere bacche ko bahut pasand hai so then was the like for me it was then and there it done for a lot of people they still come because you know ki ye this is for their entertainment ki matlab wo jukebox hai ki jo matlab wo band matlab ki hai ki jo gana bologe baja denge ki that thing ki aisa thodi na hota hai the concept of of kids coming up and doing their original music is and without any motivation like there's no ki unke parents bhi aaye it's a family affair ya kuch isme wo wala feel aata hai na ki wo orchestra wala ki ji aa bhi 10 rupaye ka nazar aana hai ki summer of 69 bajane ke liye we have no act or we go on stage and we we are so awkward ki when between our song nobody is talking there's just like and mall crowd ki wo to aur bhi kya ho raha hai koi idea hi nahi and this other band came and they were like you know ki first thing is everybody hands in the air or can you feel it phoenix or fir wo ki yeah everyone was pumped yeah, yeah. so and basically the as we are walking out the other band has already pumped the crowd up and the crowd is going yeah yeah they are on beat also and the chorus comes and like like sing it and they are sing like unko pat to now you have to sing the song now you know what they are playing so we had no idea ki wo nadia mein we can also like you know sing it mujhe nahi hai rehna ye what is this nadia mein
if these are the highest notes of their lives being struck here what if they are how many of us manage to communicate even this much yeah in these ridiculous times of post truth and jumla just expressing something truthfully is a rebellious act and a valuable one i suppose being in a group also helps i don't think any of them would be able to do this completely on his own together they have this strange confidence having known them for almost 8 years i can say one thing they may spend every weekend cribbing about the indifference around them but they don't give up i think they're just unable to give up they know what a privilege it is to pursue one's calling I just hope they last longer than the haze they sing about. As long as they keep having fun, they probably will. There's another guy who stays over here. He reads a lot of fantasy and all. Uh, out of all these books, the more intense ones, like these Romila Thapa books and stuff, these are mine because I am, in fact, a very intellectual person. So yeah, I like to go about them. sing the song start singing say yeah. this was the basic version the first yeah. version just Thick. say that nothing else okay yo <laughs> you think i'll fuck that up also <laughs> boss i have experienced it <laughs> saying fucking key all the time Allah. and stop saying fucking like all the time not not just you all of you just stop fucking saying like starting a sentence with like tum bhi karte ho are stop it be conscious about it it is clumsy talk that's true man you know how many times you have said like in the film that was just to make them feel comfortable during the making of the film now the film is over